Okay, those of you who are taking thesis seminar, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about how you can uh, you can align the main points of your thesis statement with the key sections of your literature review and then how to break down your ideas within each of those sections. So I am starting with the template that I shared with all of you. I took out a lot of the notes to hopefully simplify uh, what, it, what it is I want to share with you today. You see here that just below the title where you'll include the title of your work, you'll have your introductory paragraph that will begin with a hook and a background of the problem or background to the problem. So imagine that we have already developed those two and we're transitioning now into our thesis statement. I'm using a contrasting type of transition to then present my thesis statement. So here's an example. English language teachers should use mobile technologies in the classroom because students can interact with the teacher, they can interact with themselves, and they can reflect on their own progress. So notice here I am trying to list, in this case, reasons. I'm trying to include, in this example, three key points that will define the main sections of my literature review. My first section, students can interact with the teacher. The second section, or the second key point, they can interact with themselves. And the third key point, they can reflect on their own progress. Now, when I go to develop my first main section of my literature review, this is going to be in the form of a level two heading according to APA. So a level two heading is a title in all bold text, main words are capitalized, and it's on its own line. If you use the template, you don't have to do anything other than just change the name of the the uh, of the title because it's already programmed into the level two style up here at the top. So this is going to be your first main section. The second main section, right, will also be the same, the second key point that you list here. In this case, they can interact with themselves. And then the third, applications that promote learner autonomy, they can reflect on their own progress. Now, let's take a closer look at this because at first glance, you might think, well, these aren't related. But let's take a look. We've got your first point. Students can interact with the teacher. So this first section relates to mobile technologies because, in fact, my entire literature review is going to be talking about mobile technologies. But I'm mentioning teachers' roles, okay? So for me, I'm trying to make the connection between the role of the teacher determines the type of interaction that occurs between teacher and student. So in this case, I am going to develop a section that relates to teachers' roles in mobile technologies. The second, they can interact with themselves. Technologies for establishing teams of language learners. So in this section, I'm going to talk primarily about teams and how to build a team and, and what that means. That is going to be what I mean by interacting with themselves through teamwork. And then the third, reflect on their own progress, is going to relate to learner autonomy. So notice I'm not using quite exactly the same words. I could. I could very easily change this up here and mention autonomy or autonomous learning. I could very easily here select teamwork. That's perfectly acceptable. And I could say maybe something about teachers' roles. But I was really trying to think about how I could list this out in a very in a, a parallel way and in, in a very straightforward way that was easy to understand and then develop these sections that relate to the same idea but now more specifically address certain keywords right that relate to my study so keywords for for me in this case autonomy or autonomous learning uh, teacher teacher roles of course mobile technologies um, teamwork. Okay, these are some of the key words that come to mind, right, for this particular topic. Now, once you've established your key sections, your level two headings, and again, 
no more than four, I think, are appropriate. In fact, let me back up and mention at this point approximate keywords or approximate uh, number of words that are going to be included in each of the sections. So if we have a literature review of 2,250 words, if we divide that by three, that should give us approximately 750 words per section or three to four paragraphs, more or less. Okay, these are all approximate figures. But you can anticipate around three to four paragraphs if you have chosen three key points or three key sections of your literature review. So now what I'm going to do, once I have my main sections, I'm going to go in and develop the topic sentence. I'm going to go in and develop the first sentence of each body paragraph that's going to fit into this one section. So my section here again is mobile technologies that facilitate a teacher's roles. Here's my first topic sentence. English language teachers assume a didactic leader role by using mobile technologies to provide needed support to complete a task. So this paragraph, along with citations, evidence, I'm going to analyze, I'm going to link, all uh, it's going to be all centered around didactic or traditional learning and what that means, what how certain technologies are used in a traditional way. Because this is one role that teachers assume. Okay, now you may say, well, that's not necessarily a good thing, but that is a role that a teacher plays. So I'm going to mention it first because I probably want to mention this first as it maybe it's the least important or maybe this is maybe a, a role that many teachers will assume first as students are really dependent. Maybe in the beginning of stages they are still learning uh, or they're not used to the teacher for whatever reason. Then the teacher may it may be more common for a teacher to assume this type of role. Now the second Topic sentence, social media allows for private interactions that promote uh, a facilitating role on the part of the instructor. Keywords here, private interactions, facilitating role, social media. So now I'm going to talk about technologies and how interactions between teacher and student are still private, but maybe the student is becoming more independent. Maybe the student has more skills, more knowledge and is able to do more of the task on his own or on her own. And so that implies a different role on the part of the teacher. So I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to bring in evidence, some citations of other studies, of examples of, of social media, of technologies that are promoted or being promoted uh, in a private way where a teacher is assuming less of a role in the actual task that the students are completing, right? That's what I'm going to include in this paragraph. Then the third body paragraph, or the third topic sentence that begins the third body paragraph, is as follows. English language teachers shift to a coaching role when, when social media hosts public interactions among English language learners as they become more interdependent in their own learning. So now we're going to shift and move even maybe the teachers are going to play even a, a lesser role the students are being the learners are being more interdependent helping each other right and what kind of role does the teacher play what what role does social media play to host these interactions between teacher and, and student and what does that look like i'm going to bring in evidence i'm going to bring in citations to support my idea now, in this case, I have three paragraphs. Perhaps I need to add one more that relates to this, but hopefully you get the idea. I'm basically starting in my own words. I'm creating the topic sentence for this particular section. And I'm choosing, in this case, uh, I'm beginning with didactic because this is more of a, uh, I guess, more of a responsibility on the part of the teacher. The teacher's more involved in, in the activities to a lesser degree when classified as being a coach. 
again, and I'm only choosing in this example three roles. Didactic leader is one, a facilitator is another role, and a coach, right? So this would be one example. Now I move on to my next section, technologies for establishing teams of language learners. I'm doing the same thing. I'm beginning now with my first topic sentence for my first body paragraph that supports this idea. Goal setting among a team of language learners provides a context for collaboration within online spaces. So goal setting, we're going to talk about team building for a particular purpose, like coming together, how are technologies used or how could they be used to support some common goal through collaboration. Maybe I define collaboration and I describe what that means and how some studies that promote that show uh, examples of what collaboration looks like in the English language classroom. And I tie that into the use of technology, of online spaces, whatever that happens to be. Is it a platform? Is it some sort of online, you know, um, service that, that allows students or any, anyone to interact? Okay, so I'm basically I have to tie that in together. I don't necessarily need to find articles that talk about all of those things in the same research. My job as the writer is to connect the dots, is to show and talk about collaboration, talk about online interactions, and talk about goal setting. In this case, those are the key words. Now I'm going to move on to my second topic sentence for my second body paragraph. Technologies help how team members work together on a common goal through cooperation. Now I'm shifting from collaboration in the first paragraph to now cooperation. I'm going to be comparing and contrasting what I mentioned earlier about collaboration, but I'm going to talk about cooperation and what that is and how that could, you know, um, materialize uh, through teamwork and what kind of technologies might be involved in that, in that uh, set of circumstances. Number three, the third body paragraph or the third topic sentence for the third body paragraph begins, wiki-like platforms provide an online public delivery that allows for an authentic audience to occur. So here in this case, I'm looking at authentic learning, authentic audience, authentic materials or, or technologies. Of course, most technologies are authentic by nature for the most part. So I'm going to be talking about what that would look like and bringing in evidence to support these ideas and try to connect the idea of authenticity in learning, talk about teamwork. I could even mention and link collaboration and cooperation with these platforms and online delivery through authenticity. So that would be my third body paragraph. Again, I may need to add another one, but I've got most of my ideas already, right, with this particular section. And I do the same for my third section, applications that promote learner autonomy. Topic sentence number one, language learners who are autonomous are able to use mobile technologies to reflect on their strengths and weaknesses when it comes to their own learning. The second, language learners can focus on opportunities and threats. So basically what I've done here is the first paragraph I'm going to focus on uh, the, the learner focusing on uh, strengths and weaknesses. Right? This is an internal process, a reflection. And it promotes autonomous learning by first identifying one's strengths and weaknesses. And then I'm going to focus on opportunities and threats that are coming external to the individual so that it's, um, the, the, uh, the learner can reflect and see how both strengths and weaknesses and opportunities and threats kind of come together. Right? And we can use some examples or include examples of how different mobile technologies might promote that type of reflection. And then the third topic sentence, to become more aware of their own mistakes, English language learners can use uh, automatic features of Word to uh, be better writers of the target language. Now this is a very specific to a certain language focus. And it's, very fo it's very much related to one app, in this case Word, but it sets out to try to see how uh, a learner can become more aware of his or her own mistakes in writing, in this case. 
and maybe the support the articles are going to be there to support that now in this example i'm trying to bring in mobile technologies and autonomous learning different interactional patterns different ways that people can or st students and teachers can interact amongst themselves in your case if one of the keywords is vocabulary of course then maybe you're going to have vocabulary sprinkled throughout your your topic but hopefully here you can see the approach I've taken and that is to try to set up a topic sentence and it's always useful to kind of brainstorm and think about it topic sentences that would make the most sense that relate to each of these sections and take into consideration of course what you've already developed but sometimes it helps to put it aside and first come up with these topic sentences and then go back and move the text around look at your individual citations and see where they fit throughout your argument throughout your literature review now i mentioned earlier the use of a of a research matrix and trying to put all of this together and i think this is a good example of where you can uh, do that by coming up with these topic sentences within each of the sections as they should align back to the thesis statement but bring over those topic sentences to the matrix include the citations along the top along with the specific paraphrased or the direct quotes that you've included either in your current literature review or as you're as you're finding these the, this information you can insert using this matrix and and uh, see where they fit this is uh, this allows you to see not only which evidence will support which topic sentence but also if you're missing certain evidence for certain topic sentences then you can go and, and focus on those in your search to make sure at the end of the day that you have enough evidence to support all of your topic sentences because obviously we're going to need support for each of your topic sentences we're going to need citations in each of your body paragraphs and uh, this matrix is one way that you can do that uh, notice in this example also that i've included the main section the headings the level two headings in my matrix as well so that i can at a glance see how each of these topic sentences aligns back to each of the sections and then i can see the ideas now here you're going to replace the word evidence and you're going to actually put the paraphrase or the direct quote that came from the article up here you're going to include the citation so you might have the author's last name or names and the year of publication here you'll have the paraphrase and then the page number where you can easily go back and find that information all right so i would highly recommend that you come up with if you don't want to use this uh, matrix to find a system that works for you um, but I personally like this matrix a lot of researchers use this to just help organize your ideas um, you can use an annotated bibliography which is a good way to start as well but uh, you could then move your annotated bibliography over here this is a little more specific to individual ideas that relate to your topic you could easily have the same citation several times that might follow and maybe these are different citations they're actually different ideas that come from the same article right but but you could they might apply to more than one topic sentence depending on the idea that's being you know shared in the article all right so um probably this would make some more sense you could also have it over here as well okay just depends you know how you want to do it but uh, take a look at this research matrix i hope that this you know showing this example provides some insight um, again in your case you're going to have anywhere from two to four key points or two to four main sections in this example i've included three if you have two sections if you have two key points in your thesis statement and two key or two main sections as level two headings then you're probably going to need in fact you will need for sure a level three heading so 
just as an example, I'm just going to technologies. Okay, so imagine you have a, a, a title here. This is now going to be a subsection of this level two heading, and we're going to assign this a level three. So a level three heading, again, is a subheading or subsection of a level two. And in this case, it's exactly the same, except now the text is italicized. Main words are capitalized. It's in bold. It's on its own line, but it's italicized. This is different. Um, in, uh, it's different in the seventh edition of the APA manual than it was in the sixth edition. You may be used to seeing this as part of the paragraph, like it used to be part of the paragraph, and it used to be different. It used to be only the first word is capitalized, and it looked something like this. Right? And then you had a period, and then this was bold, but it was part of the paragraph. It's no longer it used to be like that, but it's no longer like that. Okay, so uh, we'll have a level three heading on its own line in bold. Main words are capitalized, but the words are now italicized. And the first paragraph begins just below the level three heading. So again, if you have two main sections, you're going you're gonna to start right away with the first subsection. So no introduction, no text below. It, it's going to look just like this. Level two, level three, and then you begin your first paragraph, then you would begin your second level three, same way, main words are capitalized, italicized, whatever, and then you begin the next paragraph just below. Okay, so again, that would probably, you know, level three headings are uh, probably only going to be necessary when you have two main sections. If you have three main sections, then uh, they probably won't be necessary. If you have four main sections, absolutely, you will not need uh, level three headings. If you set up your um, discussion, if you if you work in this way, if you're able to create first your level, uh, I'm sorry, your main sections, like I've done here, and you're able to put together uh, your ideas in the form of a topic sentence, like I've done here, you basically have this is your um, this is your basically your lit review. You've got it pretty much together. The only thing now to do is to go in and insert evidence citations right into the appropriate sections, develop and comment right. But this gives you a good outline to be to start. Think of this as a sentence outline. Sentence in the sense that you've got your topic sentences here. Of course, these are not sentences but headings. But you see what I mean. Uh, you you have a good outline to go by, and um, as you're developing your ideas, right, and you're bringing together your citations, always go back to the topic sentence and make any changes that are necessary. You know, sometimes the topic sentences are are apparent; they're obvious. Sometimes they're not. And it requires you to go ahead and develop the whole body paragraph with the citations and, and analysis sentences. And you have to do all that first and then develop the, the, the idea. But if you can at least come up with a general idea of what you want to talk about in that paragraph in the form of a sentence, I think this will help you see where you're going with each of these sections. Okay, I'm, I'm being very purposeful in this first section because I want to talk about didactic, the most common and, uh, you know, maybe the first role that teachers typically uh, play or, or take part in when a, a student is at a certain level and trying to learn something. And then this up to the, then I'm moving to the third, which is really the ideal. You know, we, as teachers, we, we basically want to be in a position where we're not needed, where the student can take on their own, you know, uh, learning and, and participate in a task on their own. Okay, so uh, I hope this helps. If you guys want me to look at your uh, thesis statement, your sections, your topic sentences, whatever, feel free to leave comments in your Word document. I usually get a notification, so I'll try to jump in there. If you want me to look, if you leave me a message, I usually see it. Um, and uh, we can do it that way. If you are 
facing serious challenges where you're really not sure what the next step is, you're uh, you're you're lost and you just don't know how to proceed, then we need to have a discussion as soon as possible. Do not wait until our next tutoring session. Since we're only having bi-weekly tutoring sessions, I don't want you to wait two or three days, let alone a week or two weeks, not knowing what to do. So please make sure you're asking questions, that you're reaching out when you need assistance so that you are uh, making progress week to week, day to day, preferably, and, and week to week as we work towards our deadline for March 5th. We have basically one, two, three weeks in a day to complete our literature review. That's our goal to complete it by March 5th. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. Keep me posted. Let me know how things are going if you're facing some challenges. Otherwise, we'll talk to you in our next tutoring session.